Good morning, and welcome to our service this morning. Whether you're visiting or you're regular here, whether you're in the sanctuary or watching our service online, you're all welcome, and it's good that we have this time to share in worship together. Our intimations this morning are in print, and just a couple of things to highlight. And one is for Christian Aid, uh, and there is a second opportunity this morning if you would like to contribute towards the Christian Aid uh, Week appeal. There are envelopes at the church door, and also some at the front of the church over in the corner here, which you can collect after the service this morning. Also, you will see in the intimation sheet details of our Doors Open Day, which is happening a week on Wednesday. So all of the details of that event are in print. And finally, Paul Cuthcart of Glasgow Presbytery, who has been working with us on our basis of union with St. David's Memorial Park, has written a letter for us in the way of an update for the congregation. It's available, and you may have seen it already online and on our Facebook page, but if you require a copy in print, then they are available this morning. There's some at the church door as you're leaving, and again, there will be some at the front of the church over at the table here that you can collect, but you can also see it online. Now, as we prepare for our worship this morning, let us turn to today's thought for prayer. And let us pray. Jesus said, In the world you have tribulation, but I have overcome the world. Lord God, we give thanks that Jesus sustains us in all aspects of life, in joy and in sorrow, through youth and old age, in sunshine and in shade. We are grateful that the Holy Spirit teaches us kindness and goodness and brings us peace. In this time together and in the days that lie ahead, may we open our hearts to the work of the Spirit among us. In Jesus' name, amen. Beyond us, with us, for us, in us, Creator, Son, and Holy Spirit, Blessed Trinity. Good morning, everybody. And welcome to our worship today. Let us stand together and praise God in our opening hymn, 111, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty.
Let us pray. What can we say about you, God? Say too little, and we might wonder why we're here to worship. Say too much, and there is a danger that we make you too small. So we will try in this time to say enough, enough to acknowledge that you are beyond our definitions and descriptions, because you are holy, holy, holy God, the creator, father, mother, parent, behind all the wonder that has been and ever will be, the Son, Jesus, Lord, above all others, Savior of the world, the Spirit, breath, dove, moving where she wills and unafraid of chaos, together in Trinity, dancing, living love, who is not only above us, but beyond us, not only beyond us, but with us, not only with us, but in us, and not only in us, but longs to be at work through us, making your love known, calling each and every person to be part of your story, part of your kingdom come. God, forgive our smallness of vision, Forgive us when we forget your majesty and magnificence and that you deserve our all. And forgive our reluctance and resistance to go and do and speak about you. And in this time together, renew us in your saving and merciful love that we might catch a glimpse of your glory and be ready to respond to your call with a willing, send me. God in Trinity, dancing, living love, hear these and all our prayers, for we ask them in the name of Jesus, who taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen. Good morning. It's lovely to see you all today. How are you? You had a good week? Yep, and it's a holiday weekend, isn't it? So that's even better. No school until Tuesday. All good. Well, today in church, it's a very special day because it's Trinity Sunday. And the reading that we are going to listen to in church, and the one that you're going to think about together over in the hall, is from Isaiah chapter 6 and the last time that I preached on that in here was three years ago. Three years ago on Trinity Sunday when I was preaching as sole nominee. It's been a quick three years hasn't it? And it always amazes me that you take the same passage and you can say something different. But today we're thinking about the Trinity and the Trinity well it can be a wee bit hard to get your head around because it, we're basically thinking about the three parts of the Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And we're wondering how three separate beings, the Creator, who is the Father of Jesus, Jesus, who is the Son, and the Holy Spirit are all one. That's a bit mind-boggling, isn't it? It's a lot to get our head around. And ministers, well, they either love this day or they loathe it. And many of us took to Facebook and a discussion forum to say, help, what are we going to say on Trinity Sunday? 
and a colleague came up with this idea here. What's that? It's, it's a fidget spinner. And how many parts does a fidget spinner have? Yep, three. You're absolutely right. And am I right in saying that if you choose any one of those three little discs and move it, spin it, it'll all spin together? Yeah, so you don't have to spin a particular one, do you? Just choose any one at all. And you spin it and it'll all move. And my colleague says that's a bit like the Trinity. The notion that God, the creator of all, the son who came to show and give an example of how to live and love, and the spirit who works inside us, inspires and works through us, all work together, and that is God. Any way, any way at all, through the Father or Son or Spirit, we can gain entry to knowledge and understanding and to his love. And the wonderful thing about God, it's not just there like a spidget for our fun and amusement, but what God sets in motion is love. And the energy of that love never, ever stops spinning. Pretty cool, isn't it? So my advice is all today is don't try and understand the Trinity, because we can't. Let's celebrate the Trinity and the reality that God calls us to be part of God's life and love. And that's what we're going to sing about now. But before we do that, there's a wee blessing that I came across, which I thought was quite nice, and I thought we could all do it together. So, may God the Father watch over us, hands in the air. May God the Son walk beside us. May the Spirit work through us until we meet again. High five. Yay. Yay. Ollie, high five. Thank you. There you are. So there you go. We'll do it one more time together. May God the Father watch over us. God the Son walk beside us. God the Spirit work through us until we meet again. High five. There you are. Well, that was just a wee warm up for our next song because it is, of course, our God is a great big God and feel free to do the actions as we sing along. A reminder that God calls us to be part of his love and part of his story.
Our Bible reading is taken from the Old Testament, Isaiah chapter 6, and reading from verse 1. And the reading can be found on page 674 of the Pew Bible. God calls Isaiah to be a prophet. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord. He was sitting on his throne, high and exalted, and his robe filled the whole temple. Around him, flaming creatures were standing, each of which had six wings. Each creature covered its face with two wings, and its body with two, and used the other two for flying. They were calling out to each other, Holy, 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 the Lord Almighty is holy. His glory fills the world. The sound of their voices made the foundation of the temple shake, and the temple itself became filled with smoke. I said, there is no hope for me. I am doomed because every word that passes my lips is sinful. And I live among a people whose every word is sinful. And yet, with my own eyes, I have seen the King, the Lord Almighty. Then one of the creatures flew down to me, carrying a burning coal that he had taken from the altar with a pair of tongs. He touched my lips with the burning coal and said, This has touched your lips, and now your guilt is gone, and your sins are forgiven. Then I heard the Lord say, Whom shall I send? Who will be our messenger? I answered, I will go. Send me. Amen. May God add his blessing to this reading from his holy word. We continue our service this morning singing hymn praise, praise 97. O God, you search me and you know me.
May the words of my mouth, Lord, and the meditation of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, our strength and our Saviour. Amen. I took this photo here on Tuesday night just before I get ready for bed. 1620, high heart rate. Are we alert to say that my heart rate rose above 120 beats per minute? I actually went up to 134. Well, you seem to be inactive from 1610. Yes, I was looking back through the notifications on my watch and discovered this one from earlier in the day. A day that I was glad to see the end of, having been in Edinburgh for the General Assembly. I was there just for the day presenting the overture from Glasgow Presbytery and having never spoken at the General Assembly before, well, I was pretty nervous. What surprised me though was that the notification of the high heart rate started at the end of the speech when I sat down and awaited any questions. That for me was when the real stress started because I had no idea what people might ask and although I had the Presbytery clerk on hand to step up and answer on my behalf, which I did on one occasion, it was all pretty stressful. The overture fell, the experience was an eye-opener, and though I could have seen it far enough, I was glad that I hadn't declined the invitation to go. Now and again, we should all say yes to things that make our hearts beat a little faster, especially when the only reason for saying no is because you'd rather not do it, because it fills you with dread. On this Trinity Sunday, it is that invitation, that call and response that is at the heart of our reading. The call and response of the prophet Isaiah at a time and in a place where people had forgotten and forsaken their Lord. In the opening chapter of Isaiah, we hear that my people have walked out on me, their God. They've turned their backs on the holy of Israel. They've walked off and they've never looked back. As the opening chapters unfold, we're told that God is sick of their burnt offerings, their worship charades, their trivial religious games, and yes, their meetings. Their meetings for this, their meetings for that. God says, I'm sick of your religion while well, you go right on sinning, and tells them that he's going to look the other way, ignore their prayers and their worship, and he wants them to go home and clean up their act, to say no to wrong, to learn to do good, to work for justice, to help the down and out, to stand up for the homeless and go to bat for the defenseless. And so it goes on. In short, God wants the people to turn back to him, to remember who and whose they are, and to remember how they're expected to live in the world. It's into this context, in chapter six, Upon the death of King Uzziah, who had reigned for 52 years, making everything even more uncertain and unstable, that we hear Isaiah's call. Can you imagine how high his heart rate must have risen as he experienced the vision that we have before us today? Can you imagine how he must have been feeling as he saw God in this vision? Something that was deemed to be impossible to do and live. God sitting on a throne above him, the train of his robes filling the temple. Can you imagine the awe and the wonder and the terror as angels said of fly and the foundations tremble and the smoke fills the air. Imagine is all we can do and it is breathtaking, making us ponder the majesty and the splendor and the magnificence of God. But breathtaking is also what happens next. 
For in the presence of God, Isaiah knows that he is unworthy. He knows that he is sinful. He believes that he is doomed to die, but that's not what results. Instead, he is made clean as a burning coal is placed on his lips to define them, and he is declared forgiven and free. And then God says, whom shall I send? Who will go for us? And without any hesitation or reluctance or, let me think about that, Isaiah speaks up and says, I'll go. Send me. Such a contrast to the so many other callings of prophets and their protests. Jeremiah, I'm too young, Lord. Moses, you can't mean me. Find someone else. Or Jonah, who didn't even wait to give a response, but headed off in a completely different direction. Not Isaiah. Okay, need someone to go? I'll do it. And we know that from all that follows next, goodness, in the very next verses that follow this passage, Isaiah's task isn't going to be easy. There will be many who will be deaf to his words, many hearts that will be hard, but his calling is to go because that is what God requires. And that, friends, hasn't changed. I've been so struck in recent weeks as we've moved from Easter to Ascension and then Pentecost to have returned time and time again to upper rooms. First to hear of the risen Jesus among his friends behind closed and locked doors. And then his promise to go and to wait in Jerusalem for the coming of the Spirit. And then last week, hearing Jesus tell that God will not abandon them. Yes, he's going away, but that is so in order that the Spirit might come. The Paracletus, the one who comes alongside and will be with them right to the end. And Jesus is quite clear that the road at times is going to be rough. He's explicit in telling them that not everyone will respond well to the message, but he leaves them in no doubt. That is their calling. Their calling to go into the world and share the good news that Jesus is alive, that he is Lord and God is love. And that love is for everyone. That calling hasn't changed. And today, it is more pertinent than ever. Especially in light of the census statistics this week that made for sobering reading. For the first time in Scotland's census history, a majority of people said that they had no religion. A total of 51.1% up from 36.7 in 2011. And of that, 20.4% associate with the Church of Scotland. Now, if our religion is like that of Isaiah's day, then God wants nothing to do with it either. So our response is twofold. We have to make sure that we get our act together, that we are putting our faith into action, saying no to wrong, learning to do good, working for justice, helping the down and out, standing up for the homeless, going to bat for the defenseless. But we also have to realize that each and every one of us here has to speak up. We have to find our voice. On this Trinity Sunday, when we remember that God is with us and for us and in us, 
And that should make us remember that God also wants to be at work through us. And part of that is speaking. Go, Jesus said, go and make disciples. Baptize them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit and know that I will be with you to the end of time. We need to get better at speaking up and sharing who Jesus is and what he means to us. To be able to tell of the difference it makes to know him and have him in our lives. The hope we have in him. The joy we know because of him. We need to go and make disciples. To be like Isaiah and in response to the question, who will go for us? Put our hands up and say, Lord, send me. For here's the thing. If not you, then who? If not now, then when? <coughs> it's you that God is asking. It's you that he wants to go. Not just the minister, or the session clerk, or the elders, but you. God wants you to find your voice, speak Jesus' name, and share in love and respect what he means to you. Trusting that while it might make you feel a bit queasy because you have no idea how people might respond or the questions they might ask, that God will be with you. That is what he's promised, to be with you right to the end of time. Let's not be like Jeremiah. Oh Lord, I'm too young or I'm too old. Let's not be like Moses. You can't mean me. Find, find someone else. And let's not be like Jonah, heading off in another direction because we think that those beyond these walls don't deserve to hear the message. Let's be like Isaiah. For here's the thing, no one is good enough. And yet, this God who is sovereign, who is above all things, looks upon you looks upon us with love. So much love that he came to be with us in Jesus, giving us an example of how to live and love one another, showing us in his death and his resurrection that there is nothing that can keep us from him, that he is for us, and then sending his spirit to work in and through to help make his love known and his kingdom come. God loves us. God has set us free. How does that make you feel? Does it make you feel good? I'm looking around and I'm not too sure. <laughs> it is good news that we have been given. God loves us. God calls us his children. And that joy of knowing that draws us into service like Isaiah and should lead us out with the good news to our world who needs to hear it. Friends, I don't know what makes your heart beat faster, but I really hope that the truth of God's love, the truth of God's love that we have just heard in these moments, sets your heart racing. And I hope in these days 
that it inspires you to go out in the strength of the Spirit who is always with us and share God's love like never before. For God is asking, who shall go for us? May you speak up and say, I'll go. Send me. Amen. There's only one hymn that springs to mind when I ponder these words. And it's the one that we're going to sing now. 251, I the Lord of sea and sky.
As I was thinking about the Trinity last week, I uttered the words on Thursday afternoon, holy, holy, holy God, Lord of power and might. And from that you might have guessed that I was sharing communion. And after Tuesday, it was a joy to return to the parish and be out and about visiting again. And there in the ordinary things of life, among ordinary people, God came. And as we shared in the second prayer, I said to the person that I was sharing communion with, and during this prayer, if you want to, you speak out loud and say your prayer. And they looked at me and they said, no, no, your words are far superior. And that made my heart sad. But what made it delighted was at the end, the person started to pray. They spoke out loud and offered to God their thanks and their words. And friends, for me as your minister, that's what I feel I'm called to do. Not to give you the words, but for you to find your own, to help you find your voice, especially when it comes to the things of faith, that you might know that your words matter, that your words are heard because you are loved. And in that then, together, we can go and share the good news. And so we're going to pray again. And yes, they're going to be my words, but there will be silence for you to offer your own. And if today you feel so moved, then speak those out loud. It is absolutely fine for you to do so. Let us pray. Whom shall I send? Who will go for us? A question requiring an answer from us all. Lord God, this day may we hear it afresh. May we know it is for each and every one of us. And as this new week unfolds, may we mull it over and say yes send me send me to be good news to someone who is sad someone who is lonely send me to be good news to someone who is hungry or someone who is struggling send me to be good news to someone who is searching or someone who is ill Send me to be good news to someone who is grieving or someone who is scared. Send me and help me to know when to speak and what to say, when to be simply silent and listen, where to go and when to leave, and how to use my time, my gifts, and my money, which we dedicate to your work now. Nudge us, Lord, to wait on you, to seek your presence daily. Inspire us to work for you, trusting in your love and goodness. Send us to be your body in our world, believing that you call each of our names and we are known, held, loved forever in God, the Trinity. We pray this day for all those exploring the things of faith, whether pondering your mystery for the first time or grappling with new images of you. We 
We pray for those discerning a call to a particular ministry of your church and those who will walk and accompany with them. And we pray for your church, for our congregation here, for all your churches in Kirkintilloch and Lindsay, for the Church of Scotland, and for your church throughout the world, that, Lord, we may be open to the movement of your Holy Spirit, ready to be equipped once again to meet this hour. And we fall silent. And we bring you the prayers of our hearts this day. In our resting and rising, our laughing and sighing, our working and playing, our enduring and celebrating, may we know you, parent, son and spirit, creating, challenging, sustaining, delighting, calling us forever into the work of justice, mercy, joy and peace until the day when the whole earth is filled with your glory. So be it. Amen. One of the good things about being in Edinburgh on Tuesday was I was able to buy a copy of the new supplement to CH4 called God Welcomes All. And I hadn't chosen the hymns by that point. And so our final hymn is from that new hymnary. It's on your intimation sheet. And it's called Here and Now We Are Bound Together that reminds us of our call to go.
of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, rest upon you, dwell within you, and lead you forever on. <laughs>